Well, hello everyone, and uh, welcome to the channel uh, EV Solar and uh, Killer What's It's. Um, uh, this is um, going to be uh, sort of a three-parter, really, or many, many parts, but three main subjects. Um, first of all, dealing with or having a look at um, the uh, uh, switching our energy, uh, depending on sort of what tariff you're on uh, at the moment, and whether you're looking to actually save a little bit of money, um, as as we did. Um, so sort of the various options that are out there, and how you can quite cleverly uh, look at um, if you're a little bit flexible about how you use your energy, uh, how you can actually save a little bit of money. Um, the second thing uh, we're going to have a look at um, is solar, and uh, I recently went on a bit of a journey um, in uh, um, selecting uh, quotes um, and gathering lots of uh, information uh, to sort of better prepare myself. Uh, and understand really just what we needed in terms of solar generation, um, how we could best use our solar power, um, and um, how to maximise its efficiency. There's loads and loads of information that's going to come through on that. Uh, and also, um, an extension to that is an electric vehicle. How you go about choosing that, what's right for you, what we did, uh, or what we're about to do, I should say, um, having just signed on the dotted line uh, only a few moments ago. So um, lots and lots and lots and lots to talk about and um, this is going to be really great because um, you're kind of going along uh, with me at the same time as, as, as actually it's kind of happening. So just to put you in the picture, I've recently just signed over to Octopus Energy uh, Agile Tariff, more on that in, in just a moment, um, it, to optimise our sort of energy consumption on um, throughout the day. Um, that links in with uh, solar panels, um, which is being commissioned next week. In fact, the scaffolding goes up uh, tomorrow and the solar company come uh, next uh, Wednesday for uh, probably for the rest of the week, probably to the early part of the following week uh, to, for our setup. Um, and I think at the end of next week, Friday, the car comes. Um, so yeah, um, lots and lots uh, to talk about. So but this video is going to focus uh, more on, um, or in fact exclusively, um, on um, tariffs and uh, how you go about switching and whether it's uh, what's sort of right for you and what, what I did and what we looked at. So, okay, so big picture, we went over to the uh, Octopus uh, Energy Tariff. So we were on um, British Gas, I think it was. Prior to that, we were at E.ON. Uh, prior to that, I think, um, just trying to think who we were with uh, before that. It, it might have even been British Gas. Uh, before that but so so most years I would swap so I'd go on to the comparison websites and um, have a look around punching your information how much um, energy you were using um, and what the cost was and the comparison site would come up with it I think there's been further advancements on that still now so um, there are look after my bills or look after my energy um, uh, website uh, which I think is, is to all intents and purposes very very good um, but they they tend to sorry excuse me they tend to focus very much on generally um, sort of fixed fixed prices so basically who's offering the cheapest fixed rates um, what the cheapest sort of standing charges are and then um, you know you're encouraged sort of um, or, or your matrix is decided on which uh, options would be better uh, suited for you. So, you know, we were paying something like, I mean, astronomical, I can't believe we were paying what we were paying. It's only when you look into these things now that you realise there are better options. But I think we were paying something in the region of 18, 19p for our electric, which is just embarrassing. Uh, but anyway, it is what it is. And uh, that was 18, 19p for our electricity. I'm going to focus more on electricity. I'm not so worried about gas. Gas is actually quite cheap, but we're, we're predominantly electric in our house. Um, and it was like, three and a half p or something like that for uh, gas and standing charges between the two 21 19 21 p something like that standing charges so um in fact i think british gas was slightly more than that i think it was 25 p for uh, for uh, gas and electric so and and and, and uh, octopus is slightly cheaper than that so you know i pay 135 pounds a month um and you know i i 
I have credit in the summer and, I, and then I use a lot of that credit in the winter, maybe go into debit and then they adjust your uh, payments uh, accordingly. So that seems to be typically the way that it goes. Um, most of us like to sort of not worry about it uh, and so a fixed tariff works really, really well. So you can use it at eight o'clock in the morning when everyone's getting ready. You can use it between four and seven in the evening when everyone wants to come home for dinner um, and you don't have to worry about it. You're just paying a, uh, a fixed rate. So um, that's, you know, I, th I suppose a large percentage of people looking at using their energy and not kind of worrying about that with all the other things that are going on. Um, however, 1920p is a lot of money. So having a look around, uh, I looked about and found um, Octopus Energy, and there are a number of reasons why I've gone for it. Um, but I'll, I'll explain some of the my, my reasoning behind it. First of all, their fixed energy price uh, for electric uh, was something like 14 and a half p. So that was saving me about five or six pence per kilowatt, and I'm using about sort of 17 kilowatts uh, per day. Look, I know, not massive money, but when you work that out per day, sort of 30, 31 days per month, 365 days a year, it does add up, it does. And there's just no point throwing money away. So you've got to make that, you've got to make a switch so that you can get onto a better uh, a better tariff. Um, they, their, their website actually is not that fantastic, I have to admit. I think all their research and development is in the tariff itself rather than their, their website. But in terms of email communication, uh, you know, asking questions, I got, I got answers back within, within a few hours in some instances, which I think is you know, pretty fantastic from a, from a customer service point of view. Uh, but, but some of their website bits and pieces aren't, aren't as um, sort of intuitive as, as, as you might, particularly when you're looking at these sort of diff, different options within there. But anyway, super, super cheap. And um, you know, when, I, when I looked at it, you know, sort of immediate savings uh, there, both on gas and electric, in fact, and the standing charges. So brilliant. Um, so immediately saving money there, which was which was uh, fantastic. So I oh, signed up and I think I got £25 uh, for signing up to Octopus. That went onto my account once the energy um, uh, moved over. Um, I'm going to put a link in. Every time you sign up to Octopus Energy, they give you uh, a code uh, which um, if uh, your uh, friends, family uh, or anybody that wants to sign up to Octopus Energy, if they use that link, they get £50 and so uh, does the person that's given you uh, the link. So one thing I have to be very clear about here, um, I'm not affiliated uh, to Octopus Energy whatsoever. This is just my choice um, for my research. It's worked for me. If you look at it and it works for you, then use the link and we both get 50 quid out of it. Um, whether you do or not, it's it's entirely up to you. The purpose of this video isn't to sell Octopus Energy, although it could kind of sound that way at the moment. I'm just It's just worked for me. I'm just kind of going through what I did. And if that's really good for you, fantastic. If not, doesn't matter. Okay, there's lots of other things in this video that can be find quite useful. Um, so, Looking at it further, they offer something called um, Agile Octopus, um, and that looked quite interesting to me because when you investigate uh, energy a little bit further, you realise that the price of electricity goes up and down uh, throughout the day, and by quite some significant amount, depending on actually a lot of uh, green energy you know uh, solar wind and um, hydroelectric uh, power as well um, but it moves around a lot obviously when demand is high prices go up when demand is low then naturally price prices do go low um, and there is such a thing as price plunging so when there's an excess amount of energy uh, on the grid um, there's really nowhere to put this energy and it costs a lot of money to be storing energy in, in large batteries for the, for the periods of the time when it's, when it's going to maybe used. Um, and, so it's, and, and there's too many sort of fluctuations in solar and in wind, it's a little bit unpredictable. So sometimes the, mark, the, the grid gets flooded with energy and so the price comes down significantly. Now I've heard reports of being negative, I haven't seen that myself yet, but there was a period, and I've got a screenshot, and I'll try and put it in the video, where it went to 0.8 of a penny for, all right, it was for half an hour. Uh, but either side of that, it was like 
a penny or one pound, I'm sorry, 1.2 pence or something like that for quite a significant amount of time in the evening uh, or, or in the early hours of the morning when the demand was low. Um, so it moves, it moves like this. And in fact, I don't know if I can show you whether uh, this is, you're able to zoom in on this, but uh, when you go onto their website here, you get presented with a graph like this. And um, you can also uh, see the uh, sort of pence per kilowatt per every half hour. Uh, and you can see it moves around quite a lot. So there are sort of peak times in the day, it's something like 30, 35 P, but that's capped with octopus. Um, uh, so you won't pay over a certain amount. Um, but it's, it's going down as low as sort of three or four pence uh, on a sort of typical day for early in the morning. So these, these are, if you like, their wholesale rates. They're not specifically wholesale. There's an inflation on that because um, obviously octopus need to make up their um, um, end of it, and make a bit of profit out of it as well. And there's a formula which shows exactly how they do that. But essentially what you're seeing is actually double the um, um, sort of market rate. Uh, so it's, it's when you actually realise how much, how cheap electricity really is and what we're billed for and how much we're billed, it's, it's almost criminal really. I mean, it really is. I mean, I'm, I'm no electrician. I don't understand, you know, the, the, the what's involved in actually creating the grid. And I'm sure that it's colossal expense and of course you've know, got to make that pay. Uh, but, you know, for a consumer, when it's sort of one or two P and you're paying 11, 12, 13, 14, 15 P, it just seems crazy to me. So anyway, um, I've signed up for it. Uh, there's conditions that you need a, a SMET two meter. Um, I think you can do on a SMETS 1 and then they upgrade it, but pff, you know, if you've already got a SMETS 2 meter, then fantastic because they don't have to come out and install it for you. Um, and they, excuse me, they can read your meter every half an hour and they can give you uh, consumption data and billing data. I'm just about to get my first bill, uh, but um, I've actually got some of my own data which I've gathered sort of through the app. Uh, which I can show you in just a moment. So I've done it, Octopus um, uh, Agile. Uh, I, once I was, you've got to go on their basic tariff first uh, so that you can register your account. You're on that for maybe a week, 10 days, whilst they're getting data from your SMETS 2 meter. Then they email you and say, hey, uh, congratulations. There's a little like timeline at the bottom. It sort of ticks on the way. So account registered, smart meter readings every half an hour, account set up. Agile done. Uh, so that's really, really good and really quick. Um, so yeah, I would say probably two to two, two, ten working days that that came through and um, get the app. Um, there's some API data that you need to sort of set up. It's a little bit fiddly, if I'm honest. Uh, you've got to be careful about the numbers you're selecting, but there's instructions on the website how to do that. Uh, and uh, you're able then to uh, have a look at your uh, app and it'll tell you what your rate is at that moment. So whoa, today is actually uh, fairly expensive day so um, I'll show you uh, just up here at the moment we're about 12.35 kilowatts I guess it's an overcast day it's not very windy but I don't know if you can um, you can see that I might just have to zoom in on that uh, for you okay uh, so there is um, a graph showing you the rates for the day just on the top here this is that's a, a really useful function what that does um, is if you've got a run or run an appliance for like uh, two or three hours, like your uh, dishwasher um, or washing machine, or yeah, say you even want to charge your car up in the middle of the night. Um, you just put a sliding scale here as to how long it's going to take. Uh, it will then tell you what time to actually set it. You can set an alarm there, or a reminder, and um, it'll also tell you what the average rate is um, as, uh, as well. And then you can see here, um, sort of uh, lead numbers in the green there. I'm sorry this isn't a fantastic thing because it's my camera and it doesn't auto zoom. Um, uh, and you can see there that uh, it goes, uh, you know, much cheaper in the early hours. And then as we, as we get towards peak time between four and seven, uh, it goes up again. So um, yeah, if, if you're able uh, to move your energy around uh, through the day. And I'm not talking about specifically, you know, looking at every half an hour, but you know, if, if between four and seven, you can avoid using high consumption, uh, um, to the zoom again, um, high consumption appliances, then that's great. So if you didn't have to eat at four o'clock and you had at, you at half three, you know, you, you can make some savings there. Or if you normally eat at seven and you at 7.30, then, you know, um, um, being a little bit um, um, flexible like that, you know, I think you can save some money. But even if you didn't, um, there's only three hours of the day on a typical day, on some exceptions to it, that 
that actually where it gets expensive. So you've got 21 hours of the day where it's at like four, five, six, eight, ten pence. Um, and for three hours a day, it's 20, 25, sometimes 30, maybe peaks at 35. I still think even if you're, you know, throughout the day, even for your base consumption, you know, you're going to be doing um, you know, pretty well out of it. Um, so anyway, the truth is going to be in the pudding. Um, well, the truth is going to be in the pudding. I've actually got some uh, data here, which uh, which I can share with you literally over the last um, uh, couple of weeks, uh, which I've used. Um, and uh, week one and week two, um, looking at the everyday um, consumption is between sort of uh, 80 and 90 kilowatt hours. My cost um, is about £9.60. Um, the average rate um, for the day, the average pence per kilowatt for the day was about £9.80. Um, my average use was £11.40. Um, that's because of where you're using your energy so there's there's two averages are slightly different there's the average price for the day and then there's the which is if you like every half an hour um the rate is taken and there's an average of that but of course your average will be slightly different depending on how much you're using of those peak time of most peak times so you know we're a little bit careful but i'm i'm not you know, we've got a family of four here with two teenage children so it, you know you this is these are real figures okay i'm, I'm not being super super in a comic we're being careful but we're not nailing it and you can see that because my average is 11.40 their average is 9.80 so there's there's some i could be a bit more economical the previous week to that um, 110 kilowatts 12 pound 39 um their average 10 my average was uh 11 and this week so far a little bit better so nine pence uh, per kilowatt is my is my average over the last three days so you can see that that it that that it, that, that it moves around. So um, even compared to their fixed rate at fourteen and a half p, we're still making some savings there. So um, yeah, there you go. Some some interesting data there, and uh, some um, you know it's all real real world um, real world figures as they call it. So that's the sort of thing they're using um, EVs. So we be careful what. To, using too many of this, this sort of terminology um okay so there it is um i'll put the uh, link uh, in the bottom um of the uh, website and you can sort of take a look at it yourself um I, we're going to play around with this because I, I think there's there's some more savings to be had um and um, you know we can be super economical with it obviously when the solar power panels come in then we're going to make even greater savings so i think that's going to come down quite significantly um and looking at the sort of the average sort of wattage and kilowatts you can have in a month i i, th I think we can be reasonably grid free certainly for the most part of the day but i'll talk about that in another video i don't want to get too wrapped up uh, in that right now but one other thing that i'm going to say just before i do go um is there is also an option for agile outgoing and again, I, I don't want to fall into the trap of talking too much about solar, but if you do have solar and you are thinking about it, um, there, the feed-in tariff has gone. There's a, another type of feed-in tariff now called SEG, and I'm trying to remember what that means, uh, but it doesn't matter. Um, but the companies will give you anywhere between four and a half and I think six p per kilowatt that you put back to the grid. So let's just say you're bunging out, you know. Um, 30 kilowatts in, in one day, whatever it might be, you're, you're only using 10, there's 20 kilowatts there that goes back to the grid or back to your neighbours to use and they'll pay you anywhere between say four and a half and six pence uh, for that. Outgoing Agile follows the um, wholesale rates. So um, yeah, I mean, if, if it is a nice sunny day and it's, it's sort of 25 pence per kilowatt, you're not using it and you're exporting it, that's what you're going to get paid. So uh, another reason to perhaps um, have a have a look at that. So anyway, that's my experience. Um, the next thing we're going to talk about is um, the solar. And um, tomorrow uh, the guys are going to come up and they're going to 
um, install the scaffolding and then the which tomorrow is Friday and then the following Wednesday uh, the solar company are coming in to actually install the panel so somewhere between now and then um, I'll get some video and some footage of the guys putting up the um, uh, scaffolding so you can see what that looks like um, and uh, so between now and then we'll do that and also between now and then um, I've got to go to work at some point and uh, get, some, get, get some work done uh, um, but somewhere between now and then I'll talk about the solar um, quotes um, how we went about it what information was important to me what information I was able to glean from the installers um, and uh, sometimes in some cases the trouble I had in actually you know, getting what I wanted um, uh, over what the companies kind of wanted to sell me um, so that was a, actually quite an important uh, aspect um, so I get that done uh, and then and obviously show, show, show a few videos of, of the installation uh, as well but say so between now and then I'll, I'll get some time to talk about that and uh, who we went with why we went with them um, and uh, um, sort of talk about um, the our reasons for going with uh, with a particular uh, installing company what they were able to offer us um, and then uh, yeah hopefully you'll be in a, a better position uh, to have a look at that uh, for yourself good okay so thanks very much uh, for watching um, next video is going to come up quite shortly I'll put the octopus energy link in the bottom like I say use it if you want uh, we both benefit of it if it's not for you don't I, don't I don't work for octopus I have no affiliation with them they don't sponsor me or anything like that I'm very new to this uh, but if it's good for you then great use it fantastic uh, and thanks very much for watching please put any comments in the bottom if, if you are an octopus user or or um, uh, outgoing uh, agile or um, 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 the um, Go, Octopus Go uh, tariff which is the cheap energy in the evening for, for EV cars I'm quite interested in that as well so yeah any comments please put it in the bottom be really pleased to see it of course anybody else uh, can benefit from it uh, as well so uh, thanks for watching and stay tuned